Hello, I'm Tony Ortega. Today we're going to do a workshop on alternative mark making. I'll show you an example of some of my creations. This image here is what I call Super Hombre. What I've been able to do is do some other kinds of mark making or painting without using a brush or enhancing it with some other kind of tool or instrument. We'll be doing the um, alternative mark making images on a piece of masonite, which is an inexpensive surface. And then after that, we're going to go to gessoing or painting a white background. And then by using squeegees or scrapers or cardboard, we're going to be painting and creating an image like this, a transparent or translucent images with, with sort of an abstract or non-objective background. I'm going to share with you some of the other images. So you can take a drawing and make a photocopy. Here's one of the drawings from one of my sketchbooks. And then you can see that what happens is once we transfer, it's going to reverse the image. Okay, so you can take drawings. So, you know, if you have a favorite drawing in your sketchbook and you've never known what you want to do with it, this is a way that you can do it. I also make some digital images. I make these hybrid images. Here's um, Edvard Munch's The Scream. And I mix it with Our Lady of Guadalupe. Here is the photocopy or the laser print. And then here is the image. And we did that first by doing the background and then by painting the image and then transferring it on. Show with you, show you a couple other images. Here is um, Uncle Sam as, day of, as a Day of the Dead character. And then right here is an image of him on Masonite. And you can see the background. And then you can see some embellishment or some a decorative border or background that I add with acrylic markers. This last image I'm going to share with you is Mickey Muerto or the Day of the Dead Mickey Mouse. And then here is the image on the board. Again, I want you to take note that the photocopy is the mirror image. So if text is important, orientation is important, you'll have to invert it in Photoshop. This is the image we're going to be working on today. This is the All-American Chihuahua. This also was an image I came up using Photoshop. We're back. We're going to be, be preparing our, our, um, our board and our image. So once you've selected an image, and I, my suggestion is always creating an image that's high contrast, a lot of black and white. There is some tonality. You don't want the tonality or the dark, a lot of dark values, because you end up having a bunch of dark values, and you end up not allowing some of the color to peek through or come through. So, and also orientation is important. So if there's any kind of text or words, you need to be able to invert it. So for today's class, we're going to use this All-American Chihuahua. And you can see there is some tonality, so a variety of values, but there's a lot of white or light coming through, okay? So I'm going to take a piece of masonite, or you can work on a table, and you want to put, put it on there, and then you want to get some tape. I, I suggest either a painter's tape or an artist's tape that has low tack. And then you're going to put a border all around the edges, because we're going to be putting acrylic medium on there. If you put acrylic medium, as acrylic medium dries, it wants to shrink the surface and it'll start to curl and this will keep your image from curling. And, and when you put the tape down, you want to make sure the tape doesn't cover up your image. Okay, you can see that there. And then I'm going to use this acrylic medium. I'm going to use a matte medium. This is made by Golden and I'm going to pour a little bit into a plastic bowl. You don't need very much. This whole thing works because acrylic loves to marry acrylic. In other words, acrylic likes to bond or stick to acrylic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my first um, layer of acrylic medium. Acrylic medium is the binder in the paint or what makes sticks the pigment together. I'm just going to put one one image. So you can see it looks kind of milky or a, a white, but it, it'll dry clear or transparent. Okay, you want you're going to want to let that dry for a good 15-20 minutes. Okay. And that's done. We're going to put this to the side. And then we need a surface. A surface can be a piece of paper, it can be a canvas, but I like to use masonite because masonite is inexpensive. 
And then I got some gesso, which is a primer. You can also use house paint or latex paint. You're going to end up wanting to put probably a couple coats. And I like to have the direction of the marks go in a variety of directions. Sometimes you want it up, sometimes you want to go down. But you want to get good coverage. You want to make sure you get all the way to the edge. Okay. So you're going to want to put two, maybe three coats of acrylic medium. No, no, I'm sorry, of, of a gesso, and going to let it let it dry in between coats. If you want to, you can do a, a light sanding with a real fine sandpaper, maybe a 400 grit, in between coats, and then make sure you you. Uh, wipe it off with a wet paper towel between coats and then you'll be ready and you'll have a nice surface. Okay, so once you have a couple coats of primer or gesso or latex paint on your masonite, you're ready to start doing the background colors. So you want to have your palette ready, your acrylic, your acrylic paints. You want to have several brushes. I use these really inexpensive brushes. They're called chip brushes. They run 49, 59, 69 cents a piece. Uh, you want to use, um, so you're going to need some kind of scraper, so you, if you, this is the least ex inexpensive, this is just some cardboard, this is from a um, newsprint pad, the back, the backing, and then I cut them up. Uh, also you can use a scraper like this, which is uh, what they, what so screeners use to clean up their screens. You can use an old credit card or key card, that was also good. Uh, a spackling, um, uh, the spatula if you have that. Now, another thing I found this really useful that I probably my favorite tool is an old squeegee. Okay, so what I like to do is I usually like to do two coats. The, I've already done one coat with a variety of colors on these two pieces of masonite. I'm going to come to these in just a minute, and I'm going to do my first coat. So I like to pick analogous colors or colors that are um, close together on the color wheel. I like my colors kind of pastel or very light. I've, I've added a lot of white into them to make them lighter in value. That's going to be important. You don't want a lot of dark colors. Again, I'm going to repeat that. You don't want a lot of dark colors. You want lighter colors. So I'm adding a lot of white. You can see I arranged my palette in a color wheel. And I, for each brush that I'm going to use, I'm going to use <coughs> a different uh, brush. So I'm going to start with some, some of this green here that I have. Kind of permanent green light here. And then I'm going to mix in here. I also forgot to mention, I have a spray bottle. I have a spray bottle ready, okay? So I'm just going to paint abstractly, okay? And I'm going to put that brush to the side. And then I'm going to go right next to it with a lighter color. Maybe a little bit of overlapping. Let's see, let's put some yellow over here. Okay, stick another color. Let's see, let's do the orange. Or peach, I should say. You want to work relatively quickly because you don't want the mace, uh, the, not the mason, you don't want the acrylic to dry out on you. And then put a darker peach over here. Okay, you can see I'm just painting very non objectively, okay, just laying in some colors. Now, here you what you can do is you can take I'm going to start with a squeegee, and I'm going to squeegee. So what, what happens here, it's going to blend, it's going to mix, it's also going to be make it less dense or thinner. Okay, I don't want to stop there. So I have some acrylic medium, not acrylic, acrylic paint on my, on my squeegee, and I'm going to go back and change directions, do some more layering. You don't just have to go straight up and down, you can go to at a diagonal if you like. Okay, put that to the side. You can also try things with your with your card. It's going to take a little more paint off. Okay, other things I like to do is I like to spray it and then let those run. Just adds a variety of textures into your piece. Let's do a little more spraying. Let it run. Let's get another squeegee and we're going to go in this direction. OK. 
Okay. You can also add more color at this point if you want. If you don't like the way things are going, some more color in there. Okay, let's try uh, let's try this tool here. Let's turn this way. Let's try spritzing it, see if we can get some interesting things going. I'm going to clean off what I have on here. I bought these squeegees at a garage sale a few years back. So they've been worn, they've been used. So brand new squeegees sometimes don't work as well as an old one for this process. Okay. Let's see, we've got some runs going in there. Let's kind of help it along, get some runs going in there, some drips. Okay, I'm going to lay that down to dry. That's my first set of colors. And then I'm going to, I did these earlier in the day. So here I got some cool analogous colors going from a yellow green to a green to a teal and then to a blue. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some warmer colors on top. I don't have to cover everything. Yellow in here. Again, I'm going to take my squeegee. And I'm going to go across. And you can see how the paint becomes less dense, a little more transparent. Okay. And then I'm going to use a spray bottle. Some runs going in there. Let's get my squeegee here. Clean it off. This is where you can see because there's a little contrast because you can see some of the blues coming through and the streaking there. I'm going to flip this over one more time here. I want some streaks in that yellow area just to make it a little more interesting. There we go. Get my squeegee again. And go one more time. See how it looks. Okay, so here's a nice abstracted background that you've done. I've done with scraping and squeegeeing. Uh, I am going to let this dry, and while I'm letting it dry, I'm going to get ready and I'm going to prep my chihuahua for painting. We're going to start hand coloring our photocopy, our laser print. So we'll we'll be able to color in on top of this. So what's going to happen is what when we color on top of this. When, we, when it's dry and we're finished, we're going to lay it this facing down. So when it faces down, the toner is going to be on top or in front of the paint. It'll make more sense once, once I have transferred and start doing the peeling of the paper. Okay? So um, I'm going to start painting. So here's my piece. Remember earlier I had put an acrylic medium on top of it? It's dry now. 
I got some smaller brushes that I'm going to be using. See? Some smaller brushes. And um, wherever the white is, or the lighter values, more color is going to show through. Wherever it's black or really dark values, the color is not going to show through. So I'm going to use my palette that I had mixed, and I'm going to start painting. You don't have to be super, super careful, because remember, the toner is going to trap everything. And that'll make sense as we're painting more. Okay, now we're finished painting the, the image. We're painting the Chihuahua. You see, I, I've covered up the whole image. And since I don't have a background or other things going on in the negative space, I don't have to paint them. Then my next step is to let this dry. Then after it dries, I will cut it out and then I'll get ready to adhere it to the surface. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna put an acrylic medium. This uh, Chihuahua is now dry, dry to the, to the touch. And again, I have the medium here. I'm just going to paint over that. Again, remember, acrylic medium loves to stick to acrylic paint, and acrylic paint loves to stick to anything that else is acrylic. We're going to put a, a nice coat on there. You can see it's got a milky sort of color, but it, it'll dry transparent. I'm using the matte medium. Okay, I'm going to take the hair dryer right here, and I'm going to dry it real quick. If you don't have a hair dryer, you can also just let it dry on its own. Acrylic medium dries pretty fast because acrylic paint and medium dry through evaporation. So now I'm going to take the tape off. And as I'm taking the tape off, I want to make sure I'm pulling away from the image. That way I don't accidentally rip my image. We don't want to do that after all that work, right? You can see this painter's tape just peels off really nice and easy. So don't use masking tape, period. Okay, rid of that. Have my little hand colored chihuahua, move the masonite. Now with a pair of scissors, I'm gonna take some big cuts. I'm gonna cut it just leaving a little bit of a border. If we leave the whole border, well, it's, what'll happen is since we use that a matte medium, it'll create this sort of ghost effect on the back and I don't like the way that looks. So I try to get as close as possible to the edge. Okay, this is the board. I'm going to be transferring it on there. So don't don't forget that even though the orientation looks like this, we're actually going to flip it when we transfer and it's going to go this way. Okay, so you want to try to visualize which way. Obviously, this will work that way. It'll probably fit that way. Okay, so everything's dry. Your, um, your board has been painted with two layers of colors. Your Chihuahua has been painted and cut out. You have your acrylic medium. You have some kind of scrapers, either the cardboard or some plastic. You have some paper towels. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer. So the first thing before I do anything is I want to see where I want to put this. Do I want to put the board in this direction or this direction? And then I try to visualize. So I think those colors contrast nicely. Do I want these drips to go towards the, the animal, the dog? Or do I want him in this direction? It seems like I sort of like it there. I sort of like the yellow coming from the top of his head and then some of the drips going behind him. Okay. So I am going to put it like this. So I know he's facing that direction. So when I put him opposite, he'll be facing this direction. So I have more open space over here on, on the right side. Okay. So I need to, that helped me visualize where I'm going to put the glue. So I have to work pretty quickly and you want to make sure when you put, you don't want to get any acrylic medium on the back, on the back of the Chihuahua because it'll be really difficult or challenging to peel it off. We're not collaging it in there. We're transferring the paint and 
and the toner onto the board. So I'm going to take acrylic medium and I'm going to put it on the board. Be generous, okay. Again, it looks kind of milky, but it'll dry transparent. I'm going to take my chihuahua and I am going to paint from the center out to the edges. Okay, get my paper towels ready. I'm going to pick it up, and place it down like so. Make sure my fingers are nice and clean. So I'm going to take my plastic and I'm going to start at the center of the chihuahua and I am going to start from the center and work out. And you can see I'm I'm picking up acrylic medium. I want to be able to cl clean that off because I don't want to put that acrylic medium on the back. Go from the center out. Th that way you can avoid any kind of puckers or air pockets. That, that, that part won't stick down. So you have to bear down pretty good. Again, keep cleaning off your, your plastic or whatever you're pushing down on there. Okay, I see some puckers on there and I want to make sure I'm pushing it all down each time I'm making sure I'm cleaning the scraper. You want to make sure those surfaces are sticking really well so that you're, that you're having your chihuahua. So all you see right now is the back of your, of your paper and what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry. I like to let it dry for a good hour but sometimes I let, like to let it dry overnight. I have another, one, another image here that I want to share with you that I've done the transfer already. And take my spray bottle. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to use a spray bottle and squirt the image with water. You can see it's got a different background and I colored the chihuahua the same. So I'm going to start rubbing the water onto the back of the paper. And you can start to see that the chihuahua can bleed through because the paper has become more transparent. And then the, the paper pulp is starting to peel off. And we're going to want to peel that off. And it'll reveal the transfer of the image. You can kind of see the ear, the ear starting to show off. Using the palm of my hand, peeling off the pulp. Now, you want to make sure that acrylic medium, when you were adhering, dries thoroughly. I always like to suggest overnight or several hours, but you could do it as quickly as one hour. But this is the part where you don't want to be in too much of a hurry. Spritz a little more water on there. It usually takes me a couple different rubbings. The first rubbing will get the majority of the pulp off. The second rubbing takes a little bit and then there'll be a, a little bit of a mist or what I call a ghost of the paper and that'll be the final rubbing. Almost seems like magic as we're peeling this off. But you can see all those colors coming through especially wherever it was the white of the paper was showing through or the la lighter values. Remember acrylic is plastic. So plastic is sticking to plastic. If you begin to notice any part of this is coming unglued, stop. And then slowly push it back onto the surface flat, but be really delicate, and then just let it dry. Because what's happened is you probably didn't give it enough time to dry, or you've just put, you've been rubbing and putting too much water, and it wants to unpeel. It doesn't usually happen unless you're super, super aggressive. See how the chihuahua has come through, it's transferred. And all the colors that I painted in, the yellow eyes, the orange nose, sort of the magenta lips, and then the red and the blue of like the American flag. And you can, if you remember on my palette, my, my pink for the red that I was using was pretty light and so was the blue, but you can see that there were some darker values, tonality and the tonality has made those colors a little bit darker. What's happening is what I call 
optical mixing. And with the optical mixing, it's made the blue a little darker and the red a little darker. But it contrasts nicely to the pastel background. Okay, so I've taken off like 99% of the pulp. There might be a little bit of mist in a few little areas. But what I want to do is I want to cover it with acrylic medium to seal it. I won't be able to take any more pulp. If there's a little tiny bit of pulp, what will happen is it'll make that little bit of pulp more transparent. It'll go away and you'll be able to see the color coming through. So if you look really closely where I cut, you can see a little bit of a halo, but since I cut it close, it isn't, it doesn't take away from the image. Had I just left it a rectangle, it'd be like a halo around the whole thing. And for most images on my work, I don't like that. So I'm gonna put some acrylic medium on top of it and I'm gonna dry it with a hair dryer. Again, it looks milky, but it'll dry transparent. You can use a gloss medium. Obviously, it's going to be shinier. It's nice, dry, and sealed. The next step and the final step is going to be the embellishment. Now we're going to start with the embellishment or the details, the frame, etc. So we put an acrylic medium on there. It's dry. It's sealed the, the transfer. So what I want to do is add a little bit of a border and some embellishment around the chihuahua. So you can think of the chihuahuas being as the dominant or the focus, and then the embellishment would be subordinate, and then the background itself would be even subordinate to that. So I like starting with a, with a border, I like using these acrylic markers. Okay, there you have it, an alternative mark-making all-American chihuahua.